Thank you so much for watching Colored Veils Tutorials. Today we're going to show you how to use our new set called Color Veil Essentials. It's a really great set to provide um, a beautiful light, rich tones and matte feels to your photo. So we have this amazing photo by Ashley and she has been kind enough to donate it so that we can teach you how to use actions and set them up so that they fit your photograph. A lot of times when you run actions straight out of the box, they do not allow you um, the perfect finish. And that is just because there are so many factors to exposure. And running actions is really nice because it helps you speed up your time. But if you don't um, customize those, it will not provide you the finished look that you want. So this is our before by Ashley. And here is our finish. As you can see, we pulled in a lot of light coming through the trees, kind of glistening on her skin and providing a matte velvety finish. Again, this is the before and this is the after. We are going to show you how to do this edit within just a minute. So when you start with the uh, out of camera shot, it's really important to ensure that you have um, great exposure. Hopefully you're shooting raw and you can fix that. But if you do not uh, shoot raw, there are some good actions that will help you get there. We have a great action called Essential Light. You just click play and immediately without doing anything else, it has fixed the exposure. We have it set at a fill of 32. But if you need more light or less light, you can just change this fill or change the opacity. We're going to get rid of this um, for this particular photo because I do want the depth in the trees and in her hair. But again, that is a great action to use to quickly enhance some things. So the first thing we're going to do is use Velvet Crutch. Crush. And the reason why I'm choosing this is because I'm thinking during the editing, what do I want the final feel of the photo to be? And because this one has such a great background, I was thinking velvet, deep rich tones with some sun going through it. So we're going to start with the Velvet Crush. We're going to let it fully finish. Um, the great thing about Ashley's photo is it's pretty close in exposure, so I'm going to be able to run these actions almost at 100%. Um, before I choose the percentage of the actions, I'm going to lay on it until multiples until I get the tone that I want. I'm going to click on my background. This is just a great step to use during editing before you run other actions. And the next one that I'm going to do is Glory Days. I like this one because it just gives it the perfect um, richness as well as a creamy tone. This one, there is a few things that need to be done to it because as you can see, it's just far too bright. So we're gonna turn off the crisp light and even turn down the entire action itself. The way that you turn down the action is just by clicking Glory Day, the grouping, if you're using elements, you would click on the adjustment layer and pull down that opacity to uh, fit your needs. We're also going to turn down the brightness um, just a hint to bring back some of those light tones. Once we've done that, we're going to click on the background again and we're going to run 14 karat. This is where I'm going to bring in the light going through her hair. Absolutely love the punch in the goldness from this action. Again, we're going to just um, edit a little bit of the action or the layer called screen because the screen is bringing in a lot of the light and we're just going to turn that down a hint so that we don't lose the highlights within her face um, and the depth in the creases, the natural creases. The final step, I'm going to click on background one more time. I'm going to run the spot highlighter and sharpener. This is an amazing action, um, always important to use during your editing. What you need to do with this one, because it is a brush, is you need to have a white brush. You must be on the layer mask. And we're going to just make our paintbrush a little bit small, run this over the eyes. Let me zoom in a little bit and run that over the other eye. Make a smaller brush so that I can run it through her eyelashes. Again, this is not just a sharpener, a traditional sharpener. It actually highlights things, so it's really nice. 
I'm going to run this over her lips and it gives it a glossy feel. However, for the lips, I want to click on the sharpener's layer mask, switch over to a black paintbrush, and I'm going to actually wipe off the sharpness of her lips. I don't always do this because I do like adding a little bit of sharpness to the lips, but to ensure that we're not bringing in any of the natural cracks in the lips this time because it's such a close up, I've taken that off. One of the tips to see where you've painted is just to hit the uh, vertical line on your keyboard and it will show you exactly in red where you painted off the area. Okay, the next step I'm going to click back onto the sharpen, spot sharpen and highlighter group and I'm going to come back to a white paintbrush because I still want to use this highlighter and sharpener and I'm going to make a slightly larger brush and I'm going to paint this over the hair. I'm going to be careful not to put this um, on the areas that I do not want sharpening and if I want to use the highlighter without the sharpener, again I would just click flat back on the sharpener layer and uh, paint that off. So we are set with that. The next thing I'm going to do is close it up, hit background, and we're going to burn these edges just a little bit to bring in some more depth. However, even though we want this depth around her, we do not want it on her skin. A great way to um, customize actions is by painting them off in areas that you don't want it. So we're going to get a, a paintbrush. We're going to change it to black. We are on the layer mask. and We are going to paint over our entire subject, taking those burnt edges off of her. This is a great way to use the tool without it affecting all of your photograph. So we're just painting off. All right, so we are going to finish this. I always like to finish my actions by clicking on the background, hitting our uh, finishing gloss action and play. This brings beautiful light and crispness to the photo. It's always my go-to finisher. And we are just going to go ahead and let that process. And it's usually not as long, but I do have a lot of things open on my computer. And as you can see, it just really gives it that punch. Sometimes I turn the finishing gloss um, down to around 6%, the sharpening layer of it. And we are all finished. So I'm going to show you the before. Again, this is the before and this is the after. So thank you so much for watching.